Hi guys, this is the second video uh, where we have an overview of the TOK essay titles. We're looking at essay title number two today, and we've still got Gareth with us. Gareth is my TOK mentor, so let's get into it. So question number two is, how can we reconcile the opposing demands for specialization and generalization in the production of knowledge, discussed with reference to maths and one other area of knowledge. Now, I think when, when you and I first discussed this, we had quite different views of what specialization and generalization means. Mm. And, and I think that, that illustrates the point that you, you referred to earlier, that it's important for students to feel that they can take the essay in the direction that they want, as long as they lay out their terms and their definitions uh, in their knowledge arguments so that they they, they explicitly telling the examiner what they mm. mean when they're talking about specialization and what they mean when they're talking about generalization yeah i mean i think i think for me there's an assumption that that specialization and generalization are in opposition mm. which mm -hmm. i think is rather bizarre to be honest with you it's, it's it's as if you can take one of two routes either inductive reasoning or deductive reasoning you know you um you make a huge generalization and see if it Born out by particular instances and, and and accrue evidence, which is more specialist. This is where we get to the uh, parting of the ways about the term specialist, specialization, generalization. Or you look at a range of or special kind of events and then try to extract and extrapolate a uh, general theory around it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I definitely think that there's. One way of doing this essay is the discussion about inductive and deductive reasoning. The essay directs students to look at it, uh, to look at mathematics. I don't automatically think of maths when I think of, of any of the uh, of the titles. And with this one, to try to understand it, I thought first of all about human and natural sciences. My, my background's in human sciences, so that, that's sort of where I went first. And I, and I thought mm. about the classification systems that are used in human sciences and how they allow us to go from the particular to the more general, from the specialist to the general. So if we think about social class system, or even if we think about in geography, or like human organization in geography, starting with the, the domestic household and then going up to, you know, the building, the street, the, the district or neighborhood, the town, and so on and so on, and going that 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 sort of movement from the specialized knowledge to the to the generalized knowledge helps me to understand why the question's asking that there might be opposing demands. And I think this question is a, possibly about validity and reliability is another way of thinking about it. That specialized knowledge gives you valid knowledge. Generalized knowledge should give you reliable knowledge. And in human sciences, they can be in uh, in competition. And anyone who's watching this who's studying psychology or economics or um, geography will definitely have examples that they can draw on of where validity and reliability are in competition. Oh, and ESS as well. Yeah, and it, it, I, I, think, I think it's all totally valid. I, I think also what, what demands does specialist knowledge have on us or have in general what you know I, I i don't quite understand the wording of that to be honest with you it seems to me that there is a there is a um, one simple way of interpreting this question so well if they're if they're irreconcilable then you're not going to have valid knowledge or particular uh framework or in fact a uh, paradigm there has to be they have to they have to integrate complement each other yeah uh, integration Another way in, isn't it? The, the, the difference between information and then a, a deeper understanding. Um, we can interpret or or think of specialization being kind of smaller, bite-sized chunks of knowledge. And then the generalization is, well, when it comes together, we get a grand theory. We get something which can, can understand, we can uh, help us understand the world at a much more profound level. But coming back to this idea of demands, I mean, I'm just trying to think about what are the particular demands of specialist specialization and what are the particular demands of generalization and how are they in conflict? I suppose it does link back to what I just said, that the demands of generalization is it's it's a network. It's a to use the word again, framework, whereas a specialized piece of knowledge <laughs> is more to do with just I mean, I think just like learning one knot, 
either if you're a, a, a you know sailor or a fisherman you learn one knot uh and that's a let's say that's for instance that's a specialist bit of knowledge but what comes with that is you need to have a general understanding of having tied lots of knots before about the the properties of the material if it's monofilament if it's braid or what what the actual uh the, the the cord rope or, or whatever you're tying the knot in you need to know how it behaves how it degrades uh, how uh, and what have you you've got general understanding of the way the material actually behaves the properties of, of the material characteristics of it a way through this essay is to argue that um specialized knowledge depends upon generalized knowledge and vice versa it's a mutually inclusive relationship and and uh, and it's a continuum rather than a sort of binary relationship the, the dem- and then that that brings us on to paradigm theory again as well, or, you know, paradigm shift is where when a specialised bit of knowledge doesn't fit in with the generalised theory, mm. then you, it, it could could be a, a, a shift, could mark a shift. Um, and I'm just trying to think of an example of that in the sci- uh, natural sciences, but I'll, I'll think of loads later, but, yeah, but you know what I mean. Well, the challenge is the students are directed towards math. I thought of, I thought of an example. I think uh, John Snow, uh, you know, miasma theory. Uh, when in London, when there was, um, I think it was typhoid or cholera, I can't remember, and they thought it was uh, airborne because the the Thames stunk so much. I know this isn't particularly international. Talking about London in the uh, Victorian era or before, uh, and then the special bit of knowledge was when he realised there was a clustering of of fatal cholera cases around a particular water pump in Soho. And it was that that precipitated the 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 early days of germ theory, and that it was waterborne. Paradigm shift is a really good, a really good example in there, and the one which will in the will be in the TOK today notes on this is all about behavioural economics and the rise of behavioural economics, and we'll work out a maths one. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to talk talk to a friend. <laughs> We've spoken to the math teacher, which we're currently doing. Well, there we have it, Gareth's views on essay number two. And didn't he bring a lot of wisdom to our thinking on essay number two? If that helped you, hit like, hit subscribe. I'd love to subscribe. And if you subscribe, then you're going to get notifications when the detailed essay video from Top Today on essay number two comes up. And if you want essay notes for essay number two, then head over to toktoday.com where you can pick them up. Stay toptastic, my friends.